to see you. Do we see Philippe? We're live. We are live! Dancer. What about you, Jean-Charles? I, I can see that. Look, Woo! I can do a few moves. I've always been good with me and myself, as you can see. <laughs> good. Dancing. Sing Ladies and gentlemen, we're back in Yonville today at the famous JCB Wine Bar and Lounge <laughs> with a guest that is the best of all time. He's suave, he's delightful, he's tasteful. He has texture, he has charisma, he has passion, he has Moves. the move. Look at how he's moving. And you gotta know that he shares the same passion as I do, surfing. Good one, good one. And surfing help, I think, with winemaking. You know, there's this kind of aesthetic that I always enjoy quite a bit for a long, long, long time. So ladies and gentlemen, a man of incredible reputation. And I need to tell you, as we're gonna start drinking some amazing Melka wines, and obviously the wines Philippe is involved with, with us, it's a great pleasure, honor, for that, after all those kinds of words, I hope I deserve a little more wine, Philippe. <laughs> I think you do, I think you do. It's a good start, I'm so happy to be here with you, and uh, I think, you know, with two French in the US, what's wrong with this picture? Isn't it fabulous? I'm just realizing it. Mom. Well, for you, how many years? Ooh, I hate to say it because, you know, with my still very thick accent, people think I just arrived yesterday. And I would say close to maybe how, 26 years or so, 25, 26 years. Well, and for you meeting oh, a beautiful lady, Cheryl, who is with us today, I can see. Yeah. Big beautiful kiss, Sherry. Hello, and is Gina? Is Gina's watching? Of course, watching. she's with us. Gina, and many you. great friends who are saying hello. Thank you all for being with us. But dear friends, I just want to put the perspective of who Philippe is, and maybe Philippe will sit now. Yes, yes. Unless uh, we have Jen, Patrick, or Dylan who are with us again today, who's going to put music, and then we'll demonstrate how the French dance. But dear friends, before we dive into a great discussion with Philippe, I want to tell you a few things about him. One, a great graduate from the University of Bordeaux. So as much as I love Burgundy, I love Bordeaux too. That's where he's from. We forgive him today. Number two, unbelievable talent in winemaking. And the very important part of winemaking is geology. Wine is made in the soil. I think that we the boss know. Absolutely. And then finally, and we will go through some exciting <coughs> timeline together, Philippe worked within the best organization of fine wines in the world, specifically focused on the great Bordeaux varieties. So he worked at Chateau Petrus, Dominus, right here in Yonville, Aubryon, and many others. I will not name them all, but he will eventually. And what is so exciting today is Philippe is started his own phenomenal consulting business where he consults, of course, with us at Raymond, but many other great companies, as well as his own wine. So we will be talking about that today, but maybe, Philippe, tell us how we can make people jealous with what we're wow. drinking. I so, I mean, I'm glad you're asking me, and by the way, I think I'm going to get a wonderful suntan really talking to you. Um, I, I love the, the light and the brightness, but today I'm so happy. Unfortunately, um, my wife is not here to talk with me because this is really a husband and wife affair here. I mean, that's what you need to realize. And Ermo Joe is really trying to make a difference somehow. We want to do something a little different, something like, you know, basically people either way have not done or come from a very special site and in this case for the Sauvignon Blanc it took us a really a long time to find this amazing place uh, that we call Mekera by the way ah, uh, a little tribute to my course. dad you know North African born That's in Nigeria right. so it was a little river you know yes. going through his hometown 
and um, the vineyard is 2,500 feet. As you know, Sauvignon Blanc has Merlot and all the grapes really like this kind of cooler environment. So I hope you're all jealous over here because this is insane. So you have to try it. The highest vineyard in California, two and a half years in barrels because we like to push the envelope and try to understand how Sauvignon Blanc mature. Like we want to show the, the people that Sauvignon Blanc is not only, you know, a simple wine to drink before dinner but really can sustain some of the greater Stephen Chardonnay. That's Absolutely. From Burgundy. <laughs> He's breaking my heart, but it is possible. <laughs> so how does it feel to be French? You know. Does he have yeah. a French accent? I, I, I have not noticed. Hey, I thought it was German for a little while. You know the story? is like, I feel like I'm in a no man's land. I don't know you, but after so long in the US, you know, I have both passports. That's right. You know, I can vote in this country. Well, which is a good thing to do in November. Yes. You must all vote. Exactly, and I will, for sure. And, you know, so when I go back to France, I definitely, you know, I'm an American almost. You are. I, well, I'm a, like a French transplant kind of weird guy. And, and it feels good, right? Oh, it feels right. I mean, basically because it's been so long. So know, how right? does a Frenchman like you charm the beautiful Cheryl? to say yes at first sight. Is it how it happened? So Cherie, I met her at a famous winery. You guys know, if you don't know about uh, the South Bay also wineries, you have to know about Ridge Vineyard and Montebello. That's how I met her, because working at Dominus with Christian Wax and Paul Draper, the winemaker at yeah. uh, you know Montebello, were really good friends. I met Paul, I say, Paul, I need to stay with you to learn a little bit about what you doing? I think it's That's a French right. way to say I've noticed a very cute lady working with you. Can I stay in the winery? Is it what happened? Exactly. You know, and such a naughty boy. Only Be very careful with that French accent. Exactly. And I would say only in California or in the US, after two days meeting Paul and spending time with him, he proposed to leave me his house because he was going for a little vacation. And so I have a house by myself. Shri was working at the winery I invited her for dinner. And that the good part about French, I don't know, I'm sure for you too, is like a mother for sure. really train us how to behave mm -hmm. in society and so how to cook for a woman, Ooh. how to do the dishes, Did you do all that? how to do all that stuff. So how many years later is it now? Oh, it's like we just celebrated uh, you know, on the 28th, May 28th, the 26th anniversary. So Cheryl, does it still cook for you? Does it still wash the dishes? Does it still do all that? <laughs> Shh, she's not here, this is perfect. I like it better that way. <laughs> so Philippe, you come from Bordeaux. Yeah. Obviously you're producing this unbelievable Sauvignon Blanc. And for all of you, you can obviously get all those wines through Philippe Melka directly and the Oakville wine merchant will be proposing this wine, yeah. those two wines in fact, and all the Melka wines of course, uh, at all time and as a special offer in a few days. So you'll be able to enjoy them as much as I do. Philippe, how does it feel to be from Bordeaux in the US and how do you feel it has helped you to become who you are today? You know, I mean, oh, we could talk for hours. I'm going to give you the very quick versions, but I think for me, it kind of just makes sense. It was logic for a French guy from Bordeaux who has this kind of background. You have to understand, none of my family are in a wine business. Okay, they're all doctors pretty much. And my dad was a country doctor, means, you know, driving, driving through the country to see his patients. I'm driving through the Napa Valley to see my clients. So there is this kind of... And they are kind of like your patients, right? Totally, <laughs> in many. <laughs> Philippe, so. by the way, as you probably already understood, is a great listener. And we'll talk about that in a moment. But how do you feel it has taught you to become who you are today? Is your background yes. that helpful, do you feel? I think I was lucky enough. Imagine this young guy, basically I was rescued from, from the wine business. 
I went to this geology education. I had basically a degree in geology in Bordeaux. All the teachers at the time were like asking us, what are your guys are doing to come to a classes? This is no job for you. So I had the chance basically to meet this amazing teacher. We always have to have a little yeah. bit of chance and luck in your life. Professor Seguin, basically the terroir man, if you wish, of Bordeaux. And he directed me to do a master who was really the relationship between Cabernet Franc and the soul type. One of my favorite grapes. In saint Emilion in the right bank. That's amazing. So not knowing anything in a wine, I started to learn from the best, the best chateau. And then I did the winemaking and learned my foundation and the tradition of winemaking, which I think sometimes the young winemakers want to go too fast and are missing. Yes. You need those tradition of winemaking, it's very important. So you heard the roots, the source is the soil. So give us maybe your Philippe Melka definition of terroir, because you just alluded to it. But that's a powerful one, dear friends, listen to that. Because we've been friends for over 11 years now. So I've heard that definition in some ways. You know, I think, and I'm going to give you a new one because my problem is like, it's a drinking business, so I forget everything <laughs> I'm saying in general. But I think I see, you know, I see the terroir as being a mother. I think there's a motherhood there. You know, and, and a mother basically yeah. educates you, yeah. you know, guide you in life and made you who you are. And I think, you know, the terroir is like, make you what the wine is going to be, because give really the character and, and really the personality of the grapes at the end. So there's this kind of connotation that I really love. You know, we've created with Philippe, you need to know a little secret that <laughs> I've never really shared to with so many. <laughs> it was my birthday, September 4th, 2009, when we first met. And Walter Raymond, I say, I love this Frenchman, Philippe. It would be great to bring him as uh, advising us because you're gonna retire. We eventually need to recruit a winemaker, yeah. right? Yeah. So Philippe and I officially yeah. started September 4th, wow. 2009, which was my first day in Napa Valley. Oh my, yeah. It's, it's I think, very special and Walter, was a special guy. I really so glad I was able to meet him. And you know what? I met him. I brought him into a vineyard, and his car broke down with a flat tire. We have to spend some time changing his tires. That's I think how you and make that's true terroir. with people, <laughs> and that's really true terroir. So, Philippe, we tell us about something very important in Napa Valley that you know more than anyone. And I've heard you with many foreigners explaining them the concept of the different geological soil. Because people think Napa is one soil, one wine, and that's it. Would you just educate all of us yeah, very quickly? I mean, you know, and uh, we can go, uh, like I said, on and on and on, because basically you're talking about, in most of the cases, like for here, like 60 million of history of formation of soil. Yes. But what I love to do is always compare Bordeaux and, and, and California in a way. We need to know pretty simplistically that this is a valley, this is Napa Valley. So this is a basically a valley, which means a lot of deposit by glaciations and rivers going through the valley, you know, basically shaping all those valleys. And on the side, we have rocks. Which kind of rocks do we have? We have volcanic Volcanic. Rocks. And volcanic, for the people, this is one name, but there's a lot of different types of volcanic rocks. What is really important for, for the, uh, I think, for the, the audience to know is like, the important part of volcanic rocks, even if you don't know what they are, is like they bring nutrients to the vine, so some volcanic rock will be high in you know, for example, magnesium, which is not sometimes too good, or potassium, or all those things that the vine needs. But also, it's like how deep the roots can go. Are those rocks really compact, or are those rocks fragmented so the roots can really, you know, trickle down a little deeper? And I think that the key sometimes of some of the, of the uh, I would say, uh, more intriguing wine is when the roots go deeper, I feel like you're starting to feel throughout the wine the depths where the roots go through all those different layers 
and and um, yeah, and rocks if you wish. So on that note, we're going to go on rocky soil. Let's go to a wine I believe you enjoy a lot. Raymond Vineyards, the district, and Calistoga. Yes. When we talk about rocks, maybe you want to give a true, maybe three words to describe the wine, and maybe your idea of what that soil is about and why. So when I think Calistoga, because I think for the people who think about terroir, and I found a chance. Well, just one more sound. The vibration. I feel like on a, I'm on a, in a church right now, and I'm yeah. the You the priest, and, and I'm the disciple. I'm, I'm the altar boy. Please. It feels good again. Should I stop? So Were you an altar boy before? I never been to church. I was well, never. Never been. I am the temple. I have two the parents, mosque. two parents, two different type of religions. You know, a big crash, and the kids are not going anywhere. So he believes in the soil religion. That's, that's the best. That's, that's, my, that's my. I have two things: freedom and terroir. We cannot not love those two. So, when, how would you yeah. define those? Because when we didn't mention, when you think about soil we, and, and terroir, you always have to think about the microclimate as well and the exposure. We know Calistoga is basically the warmest part of Napa Valley. So, you, when it's warm, it's intense. So, you need to have this kind of intense of aromatics. Yes. And then, because there's the rocks on these sides, and you know, you have to have a sense of minerality as well. The key for a winemaker is to capture a little bit those rocks without trying to bring rusticity to the wine. Still, you know, look at you. You are a very elegant man. So, you understand Thank you, that. Sir. Yeah, you're very welcome. The aesthetic is a big part of so yeah. how we process things. But that's what so I we have a question yes. that now that we're going into space, you know, would we be, as we have a volcanic soil, I love to would it be fun to wine. actually plant wine in space? Plant wine, no, but I would say put a time capsule there yeah. for the next people to come and they'll be able to drink some, some wine. So if you could go to space and have a mission, Yes. The mission was a green mission, like Elon Musk wants to plant roses yes. on Mars or the moon or in space. <laughs> Which, would you want to plant vineyards? And if, if yes, what would it be? It will be difficult because it's quite dark and as we know, so vine needs a little bit of sunlight. So creating well, we could give the sunlight to the yeah, vines. I know, so. creating an artificial environment, it's against a little bit my philosophy. I like things organic and natural. Natural, but I think you know it's like the last supper. Which kind of wine do, will you bring? That's it. For example, I don't know for you. You go. Well, for now I'm going to bring a Sauvignon Blanc from Philippe Melka. <laughs> I think that's one I would bring. And yeah. now, I mean, the Calisto guy is drinking it's beautiful. Amazing. What's your vintage? Shall we? Uh, so 2014. 2014. We purposely brought a vintage, which was something we we work. You worked very hard on with Stephanie. We. That's that's and. Obviously, Stephanie is not here today, but uh, uh, she's really. She was afraid anchor. to be with two intense Frenchmen together. She's the anchor of all the wines made. She's she's quite amazing. So cheers to us, Stephanie. So Philippe, you've been known as a soil whisper. Some of you are horse whispers. You've been known as a very talented winemaker, and as well uh, a very talented listener and consulting many great wineries. So how do you attribute that success and, and how do you define that life? Unique life, I, dear friends. I mean, I thought, you know, I thought I had the best job in the world. I still think I'm maybe number two after you now. <laughs> I still think you might have the best He's number job. One. But I mean, I just, um, again, the wine saved me and, and see, it makes sense. It's really something I want to do because my character, even if you don't believe me, I'm sure, is I care. For sure. And I want to help people. Yes. With the little expertise that I accumulate over the years, uh, and the chance that I had to work with some of the, I think, greatest people in this wine business, really taught me a lot. I want to bring that and help people to achieve their dreams. I think there's no better job than this. And I would say, 
you know, I'm driving and drinking all day. <laughs> Much better what than us. <laughs> and, and, and who, yeah. Philippe, because it's an unusual life, as you said, parents, doctors. Yes. Although doctors in France drink a lot of wine, it's your parents true. do too. It's true. My mom, yes. My dad, no. So who inspired you to shape you who you are? Is it one person? Is it anyone in particular in the wine world? How did that come about that you became who you are? You know, I mean, it, start, it always starts with your first, you know, your first job, like I was saying, you have to be lucky. So he started with a teacher and the terroir, okay? Yes. You get this picture. Now, he started with pe people like, you know, Christian Wex and yeah. Jean-Claude Berouet, who basically Great people, for sure. really helped me to have a really more a connection with wine now, because I started with the soil and I started with the vineyard. I didn't have this kind of wine connections. And there was the one who really inspired me to kind of go further. And after, you know, I have to say the people in the Napa Valley That's right. really inspired me to stay. I was blown away by the fact that they give you chances, chances sorry. <coughs> and you the know, hot wine we drink. Exactly. It. You take them. Yes. You take your chances. So you take your energy from people. You take your energy from people. Yeah. And you learn about yourself in the same time. And you know if you, at least you know if you're going to like it or not. Because they give you the chance. It's not like sometimes, as you know, not mentioning France, but you can be 10, 15 years in the same company without really having the responsibility to do what you really love. So you don't even know if you really like That's it. it. Well, it how would you, it would be an interesting parallel sure. because often people ask me the question, how is it as a Frenchman to work in the US? And at the same time, to be in France and to work in France. So how would you define that? I'm what are the key differences? You, I want to start the question because you are the one, the typical, you, you, in constant movement between those two. Well, I would say, and more. For me, I'm, I'm very similar to Philippe. I, I take the energy from people and I shine if I have people around. When I'm alone, it's a very boring moment with my own self. <laughs> and, and I need to confess, um, I love both and I feel. I need both, and our friend of Schlatter are listening. I could see Laurence is with oh, us oh, too. Laurence. Big kiss, Laurence. <laughs> we know it's Switzerland, but close enough. So I feel, for me, having wineries in both and leading people in both sides of the world, what I enjoy is the tradition, the heritage, coming back to time, an experimental analysis in Europe, and here thinking forward, what is my imprint, and how can I change? the existing pre-établi facts. It makes a lot of sense to me, I'm the same way. I think you need those, I mean, if you're lucky enough, you need those two worlds to really balance your life. Because yes. sometimes the US, it become almost too superficial. That's kind of maybe the, the, the downside of some of the, of, the, uh, of the lifestyle here. And so you need sometimes to go back down to the tradition of winemaking even. When I talk about wine, that's why, I always test European wine, I always test wine from all around the world because you want to have this open mind, but you always go back to the tradition and the terroir. That's, That's why it's that. So, Philippe, um, let's try your wine, your next yes, wine. Yes, the next wine, I, you know, I brought something very boring, a Cabernet from Napa Valley. Ah, we love it already! It's amazing. Um, it's one of, as you know, one of the well, Amazing. I'll give you another glass because I drink much faster uh, than you. It's one of the... Oh, yeah, sorry. I'm, uh, I'm, uh, in, uh, I'm talking too well, much. Philippe, That's how not you at all. So, Philippe, I think what is important as well, a lot of our friends, from Corey to Leslie to Carrie to Woody, many great friends are on. We're having a great crowd today. <laughs> I wanna, they want to hear, how do you think you've evolved the style of the overall Napa Valley. We all know we had a great friend who is still active here, Michel Roland, which came from a school. I never heard about him. 20 years, 30 years older yes, than us. Yes, yes, yes. To the era of Parker. Yes. To today, a new era. So I would love to ask you in front of everybody, what do you think is that new direction it's in the, wine style? 
I think it's a key. I mean, this is a key three times. Now we confessed of all our sins. <laughs> and you can trust us, we've never had a sin. No. Well, you haven't been to church, so you don't know what hell and heaven is about. <laughs> if that's maybe better, no? <laughs> well, in any case, I've said that to Gina, and she, she's watching, and she's always mad at me. I say, I'm never going to go to heaven. Besides you, I don't have any other friends there. <laughs> yeah. And I'll go before her. Well, right? maybe I'll join you. We'll see. You never know. Maybe you and I will go to hell, and Cheryl and Gina will be in heaven. I'll be, I'll be sure to bring some of the Martinez Vineyard. So this is Preacher Hill. Yeah. So, I mean, you know, this is an area This is in the Central Valley, right? <laughs> <laughs> Just a joke, dear friends. So where is Preacher Hill you know, for all our friends? For, for, for all our friends, for people, you know, our, everybody knows about Oakville. I always say this is a hillside of Oakville yeah. because it's wow. about, you know, you know, 1,000 to 1,600, you know, feet in elevation. So there's this kind of little niche there. And I think, you know, for me, talking about balance, you know, old yeah. world, new world, it's this, this is about basically, you know, the obvious sophistication with a hillside little kind of, you know, bump, pumps or, or, mm. or, or intensity or rocks behind it. Totally. You know, kind of feel. So um, this is next to the stagecoach vineyards from my lovely wife, next to the Chapelet, next to our good friend Tim Mondavi and many others. Many others. This is actually just a vineyard next to Ovid. Yeah. I call it the White House, but it's owned by those wonderful Henry and Mara mm. Martinez. So I was not able to uh, afford this vineyard yet, but maybe, you know, you can help me out. I don't know. We can always. <laughs> so Philippe, how would you define this, this one in three words? So, so give our friends three words because we're the only one enjoying it for now. But all of them, as I could see, will get it in a few days. So it's everything you need to know about Cabernet in Napa Valley. With the intensity, the finesse, yes. the structure, you know, and the soul, something will really tell you a story. We talk about terroir. I know yes. it's a blah, blah, blah words, but for me, tell me the story about it. So those, you know, dark red soil with border and border of volcanic rocks. That's it. That's it. And I got to tell you what I love in Philippe's winemaking recommendation and style, Philippe. You're very emotional, like I am. We're very sensitive Frenchmen. We cannot hug because obviously we were told that COVID-69 is too dangerous. It's six feet, by the way. It's a French six, six feet, feet by nine. It's we like never a understood the feet anywhere. I mean, this what is that? When we have small feet in France. Well, so look at that with look. red socks. I won't show you mine. <laughs> what I adore is uh, Philippe winemaking style and recommendation with Stephanie. Our goal when we started, yeah. and you remember Philippe was exactly to produce wine of elegance. And for me, coming from Burgundy, you know, I need that vibrational elegance, that finesse. And what I've loved with Philippe, which is a very different technique, with someone I believe that he has taken to the next level, is other French consultants who came tend to spouse the expectation of the terroir, whereas Philippe, I feel, has transcended the terroir. You know, that's nice. I think, you, I mean, it's interesting, terroir. I think, you know, the difficulty of terroir, actually, I was listening, Michel, you know, on, an, on, a, on mm -hmm. another note. He has a very interesting comment. He was saying, the great terroir will always shine, means, you know, basically, it's very, it's a little bit easier for a winemaker to express yeah. the terroir on great sites, like Pritchard Hill. It's a little bit more difficult to express the terroir on a lesser, I agree. Uh, you know, level of quality. So, Philippe, another powerful question. Are you ready for I mean, the depth? I'm going to need to <laughs> ask you some questions because I'm sweating here. Well, with all those tough ones. it's very rare, dear friends, that I'm on this side, but it's fun because <laughs> those are the things when we taste, and Stephanie and mm -hmm. Thane and Kathy get frustrated because a one hour tasting lasts three because we have to talk. So, Philippe, to you, this is a spectacular wine. Lots of finesse, lots of soul, lots of expression and personality. What do you feel has not yet been done in Napa Valley that you want to achieve? You know, I mean, this is like the tough 
questions. Well, but then, you think it was going to be easy? I mean, what is this story? He <laughs> was going to be in Hawaii. So dear friend, he showed up with Kapalua. I said, forget Hawaii right now. I have my friendship, which is my inspiration at work, as we know. And I have this who, you know, it's usually where I spend my little months of June. Hey, we love surfing. The, so it's, uh, it's really hard right now. But so I you can take your French I'm going to give the rose I, I to Cheryl. I'm going to give you the French answer, which yeah. is... Please. You know, we do the back. It's always about, I think the important part anyway, always thinking about the future. Yeah. Always thinking about, so really the future by being really connected with a younger crowd. It's important. We work with younger a crowd. I listen what they have to say. I want to learn. You don't feel well, you're getting younger, though? <laughs> I feel it. I still feel like I'm 25, basically. I think I'm getting more immature every day passes by, right, Jen? <laughs> but Philippe, yes, in terms of wine promotion, but tell us, you know, I think Philippe brought that too, like our very good friend, of course, uh, Christian Moix and many others. All of us from France have an idea of delicacy, finesse, yeah. sophistication. Yeah. Tell us what you feel still needs to happen and what we're striving to do. So, I'll start with actually 90s when I come, when I came, so in this country, nobody understood soil, yes. nobody understood rootstock, nobody understood chronal selection. Yes. You know how far we came from that. For sure. I started by you going to love, love that in 1994 to write. Are you that with, with I did not with, know. With Mr. John Caldwell, if he's listening, a chrono guide. Yeah, yeah. I spent my time looking at research about clone, you know, in Europe mostly, and trying to give some recommendation about what was really a clone and what was the meaning, because nobody knew about it. So that's, you know, how far we came. Now the next level, what is the next level? I think we continue with classification. Yes. We're starting to help the consumer understand those differences. Yes. And more and more estate wine or vineyard designated wines for the consumer to really understand that. Yes. And then what's next, I think, is really within those appellations, we still feel like, look, you're in Russell Yeah. You know, the winery is Russell We know that this appellation, you go east, you go west, there is a lot of differences and nuances that we need to talk to the consumer about. So working on nuances, understanding the maps better. Yeah. You know, that's always what I say. And Philippe, I'll let you finish oh, yes. your wine I'm because you're going to have to describe the wine you I'm work so hard do, on. Please do not watch what I'm going to do. So, you know, I always said to everyone, when I came in 2003, everybody asked me, why are you in the Russian River? Because I'm doing the map of the future. Yeah. When the monks, established Burgundy, you know, the 11th century, yeah. they drew the map. Over the last 950 years, we've kept <laughs> refining the map and working on what Philippe just said, the nuance. And I think that's what it's going to be all about, is the nuance of those 47,000 acres yeah. that makes Napa Valley. Totally. And Napa Valley is, is more and more sustainable. You know, farming, as you know, it's organic and Thank it should God. be mandatory. I mean, you know, I especially agree. in California. Did you hear that? Did you we hear share the same point of view. Organic Mandi farming. What do we need? Those nasty chemicals. <laughs> That's what we were called, actually, you know, winemaking to, to really also have a healthy wine. Less sulfur. Thank you. No, nothing else. No product really that are not healthy. Aren't we on the same page, dear friends? And Ten years of friendship. This is pretty exciting. That's what it is. So that's really, the future. And then the winemaking, the new generation. Yeah. I think I see. You know, the key for this country is really winemakers coming from all around the world. We talk about French, but I'm working with a lot with people from New Zealand, from Australia, from Italy. You know, those guys need to keep coming. Yes. They they really. This is the key of I think you know brings uh, the I, energy of this country. And I, I feel we are on the cutting edge because a lot of us coming are really moving, shaking. Yep. And luckily, Philippe and I come from the essence of wine at this stage. Right. And it's important for all the people who come and invest mm -hmm. that they rely on the people who are from the yeah. terroir yeah. and who are the terroir. Yeah. So Philippe, yeah. what is your passion? 
What is your passion? Besides love, Cheryl, and yes. your children. What? My wife, Cheryl, the kids. I mean, I'm very familiar. But what, with what is inside that we don't know? What, what is inside what you don't know is like, I'm very shy. So uh -huh. you need to know. So I have some tough time to give away those very well. You have to give away your secret. Personal right? information. You know me. I say it's about freedom. Yeah. My entire. I don't want to be confined. Pushed. I don't owe. I don't owe anything to anybody, and that's how I build my business. Mm -hmm. You know, I don't. I don't owe anything to anybody. I think you know. I did it by myself. That's right. And with my wife, who really kind of pushed me. So this is really a family affair. Can you believe all, all the great, wise <laughs> moment yeah. we're getting from Father Melka? <laughs> Tonight I'm going to replay and replay this video yeah. thinking, over and over. Master, <laughs> yeah. I'm going to play my chakras and listen to Philippe. But I don't know you, it's like, um, I wish I would have had maybe more than two kids because the labor is so tough to get those days. Well, I think we're very similar. My passion is to create and design the future and to really imagine and project ourselves in five, 10, 15, 20 years, very similar to what the Raymond have done with generations. And I think that's a good segue. So dear friends, a few more minutes and you're all here with us, I'm so excited. And I know there's a lot of questions. I cannot get through all of them because I have two more for Philippe. I would like Philippe to explain us this wine. This is Generations 2017 vintage that we are releasing that Philippe has helped define with Walter Raymond, with Stephanie Putnam, Kathy George, Dave Nutson, Sophie Drucker these days in the vineyards from organic and biodynamic vineyards. We created this together Tell us exactly what people should expect. I'm going to start really briefly 17. I brought 2017 Martinez Vineyard that mm -hmm. actually we were working with 18. Shuri and I uh, just before coming. Still amazing vintage. But 17 are showing like so well. Like I want to push people to really discover this vintage. Generation. You know, generation. When I think about generations and generations and generations, when the wine for me is like almost timeless. There's yeah. this kind of feel to it, so immortal. Yeah. I hate to say it, but this is, I mean, obviously it's very pretentious, no. it's not me. Why? But we have to have this, those guidance. So I think that way, plus I look at the word, I always look at the, the word, means something, yeah. you know, of a wine. Generation, generation, there's a rhythm to it. It's and you feel it in the glass. That's what the I The notes. Meant. It's a Chopin it's like with a little Beethoven. It's 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 a Chopin Beethoven. <laughs> or maybe the Lady Gaga and Drake, who knows? And but then after because we are obviously working with you, Jean Charles, he has to be sexy. Yes. As you know. <laughs> Thank you. That's what we are. Not that we are, but you all yeah. are. <laughs> but it's very true. We made a wine, you made a wine, you guided us with Stephanie on a wine that I'm in all the tastings with Philippe and we have a blast. And I gotta tell you, as many of you today are with us and you were with our blending session yesterday, the art of blending. So with Philippe and Stephanie, what is so exciting in those tasting moments, we have 40 glasses in front of us and it's the nearest percentage point, the nearest half a percent. Totally. I was saying people ask me, you know, what is the art of blending and what do you have in mind when you blend? Blah, blah, blah. You can go on and on and on. But one direction is always about when you make those kind of wines, aging. That's it. So why a wine age better than another wine, for example? I always say it's like a foundation of a home because I like architecture. It can be a small home, a yeah. big home. The foundation has to be solid, well engineered, and really based for, for this, this home. And then after you bring the design and the decoration, it's going to be the texture and the flavors of the wine. But the foundations are key. And what's the foundation are for me? Everybody's different. You have the alcohol, you have yeah. the, basically the acidity. Yeah. So alcohol will bring a little this sweeter kind of feel, the acidity, the freshness, and also the structure of mm -hmm. the wine. The three things are really, has to be engineered in a perfect way. Freshness, structure, 
and acid again so alcohol sorry for the sweetness so alcohol sweetness acidity and structure uh, Philippe a question on that I was asked yesterday yes. in the blending seminar we were doing which was a great one and Gina helped me of course and she mainly did it all because she's a much better blender than I am, of course. Of course. <laughs> My divinity. <laughs> yeah. So what do you think of when you blend, when you create wines? Because, you know, it could be thinking about the person drinking it, it could be thinking 10 years down the road, it could be thinking the moment, it could be thinking about what you feel. What do you think about? You know, so it's an interesting comment because I was, and, and again, I'm kind of backtrack a little bit. I was saying yesterday, sometimes I arrive to a blending session and I say, I'm sorry, I can't because I don't feel it. That's it. This is not the right time, the right mind. You have to have the mind, you have to be excited about That's what right. you want to create. Yes. And what you want to do is even not create whatever we want to say, but you have to be excited. What I'm thinking, it's really simple. I'm, I'm thinking about beauty. There's something very, an aesthetic approach that I personally have to have. I think the European may be a little bit more the, than the American when we grow up in France. Look at, we grew up with, you know, La Croix, we grew up with, uh, you know, all those cultures. We're very there, visual. With very visual. Yeah, yeah. And so it has to I'm be there. You. And after the pleasing factor, I always think about the pleasing factor. And everything, obviously, the technical part has to be there as well because that's the foundation of a wine. So beauty and technical. So Philippe, we have a few minutes left. A very important question. <laughs> what is your dream? My dream. Your dream. My dream. Besides Cheryl, your children, yes. making great wines. What is you the know, dream I that see, you want to share? I see, you know, I'm, I'm, I see my dream like waking up, you know, in a house full of greatness which mean great wines everywhere. <laughs> yeah. you know. So wine means yeah. beauty. Oh, beauty. You know, you're like, you wake up and suddenly you have, you have a, a case of Petrus 61 and a Cheval Blanc 47 and, 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 and you know, some Well, and Melka 2017. And, and 17, which... And Generation <laughs> 17 and here it is. And here it is and you're like, you know, you're dreaming it. But if you go outside of wine for a moment, what is there anything else that you, as an individual, think you want to dream? I in like, your dream, you want to achieve. I like simplicity, mm -hmm. and, and I like to be in, in places who inspire me. Uh, basically, as you, you know, all one of them, it's really <laughs> surfing. <laughs> surfing, surfing as a kind of a freedom feel. I agree. That's really kind of... It's uh, healing. It's, it's mental it's freedom. Mental, yeah, it's kind of helped me. Unfortunately, here the water is so cold that I, and I'm so busy uh, that I cannot do it enough. Anymore. Maybe we should put two boundaries in the Napa River. Yeah. A little pump and we'll surf in the Napa River maybe, together. Maybe a wave in the Lake uh, Hennessy would be nice. Would be great. <laughs> I, would, I would be there a lot. So, Philippe, the last thing. You know, you've been vague on a few things, but now yes. you've got to be precise. <laughs> Is there a secret that you wish to share about Philippe Melka, about you your know, life, your dreams, your aspirations? I always share, I was, I mean, thank you. As, as you know, I think you have to, um, I think it's important, especially for the younger generations, to really have a certain uh, a humble approach yeah. in this business. This is dealing with mother nature with change all the time, every year it's a new challenge. You never want to think that you, you accomplished. And, and you always on the search of the perfect wine. And you always wake up by stressing, did I pick too early? Did I did the right thing? Did I, should I change something? It's a constant, you know, struggle. Yes. It's not only about having fun, but there's a struggle, there's a constant question in my brain. Never being satisfied, always searching always looking for something that we have in reach, always going beyond the obvious. Right. Dear friends, yes. Father Melka <laughs> continues with his wise word on a Monday. Hello, Charles, it was a pleasure to see you again. And to the next dinner, to the next blending session. You know, we do a lot of dinners together. Uh, the last time it was in 1969, so I know Woody, yeah. You ask uh, Philippe's favorite vintage, what is that? 
Do you know? Ah, do you know why? Maybe, yes. Maybe we I shouldn't say. say. Just I say why. Say. I won't say. <laughs> but tell the vintage. 91. First year in Napa Valley. Dominus 1991. Still one of my favorite wine uh, up here. Exactly. Well, that's a good one. I'm going to be, you haven't asked me, Woody, but I'm going to tell you, it still is 1969. <laughs> for many kinds of reasons. So dear friends, wasn't it fun to be with Philippe? Philippe, we want to thank you, of course, for all what you do with Raymond Vineyards and JCB. Because let's never forget, Philippe advises us magically as well on JCB. And I need to confess, Philippe, one of my secrets, which is not a secret, I've learned so much with Stephanie, of course, with Gina, my lovely wife, but thanks to Philippe, I know how to connect our vibrational European feel to the Napa Valley. And I've learned not how to make Cabernet, but how to tell you what I like and don't like. So Thank you, Jean-Charles. I mean, as you know, it's, you are one of the rare friends that I can work with. It's, so it's very unusual. And, and you're such an easy person because you really inspire me. Thank you. In many ways, and I really appreciate it. And it really helped me to move forward and make those great wines. And I think that's the key of everything. So thank you, Philippe. To mutual love, mutual yes. admiration, and inspiration. Because, dear friends, this is what life is about. When you find phenomenal people who have that magnetic feel that Philippe does, and this is why his eyes are on the label. And we have a new label with both eyes. Actually, my wife and I, we changed it. We made it fair. Love it. It has to be the two of us. So I'm so happy about this new And design. I'm glad you have the same eye color, so that really helps. <laughs> She's actually, we did it on, it's a little bit of work. She's blue eyes, I'm brown eyes. So there's a little bit of, uh, of work there on this label. It's amazing. Well, Philippe. Thank Cannot you. wait to taste. We're going to be tasting this week again, Raymond and JCD. We're going to have a lot of fun. Yeah. Dear friends, Thank we'll you. see you soon. Come Wednesday. On. Keep drinking some great wines. Thank you. Oh.